Hello, my name is Amanda Lamont and I'm the Climate Action and Disaster Resilience Advisor at Zoos Victoria. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands on which I am recording this video, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and pay respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I acknowledge their over 60,000 years of continued connection to care for land, water, animals and culture. In this presentation, I hope to ignite your passion and build your awareness of the critical role that conservation-based organisations like Zoos Victoria play in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. Through our values of optimism, curiosity and trust, we are supporting the Sendai Framework and the Sustainable Development Goals by reframing our approach to species conservation and wildlife management in light of climate change and a rapidly changing disaster landscape. I hope that by sharing our story, other organisations and communities will join us to build our collective knowledge, expertise and resilience to climate change and catastrophic disasters for wildlife and for all of us. Zoos Victoria is a world-leading, not-for-profit, zoo-based conservation organisation in Victoria, Australia. We have a long-term commitment to wildlife welfare and threatened species conservation. Our motto is, not on our watch. No Victorian terrestrial vertebrate will go extinct on our watch. We have three properties at Hillsville Sanctuary, Melbourne Zoo and Werribee Open Range Zoo. For the past decade, we have worked passionately and tirelessly to fight wildlife extinction. Here on the screen, you can see our 27 fighting extinction species. These are the animals we are fighting to protect. These species are on the brink of extinction and we play a lead role in recovery work, research, funding and building public awareness. There are an additional eight threatened species on a watch list for conservation action. I will now play a short video about some of our work during the bushfires in Australia in 2019 and 20. life-changing for so many of us, definitely for, for me, and pretty heartbreaking sometimes, but also uh, just it's really wonderful that we were able to put our skills and experiences and the, and the resources of Zoo Victoria to use at that time and, and look after that many animals. The emerging role of Zoos Victoria and other conservation-based organisations was really highlighted during these bushfires. And since then, Zoos Victoria is now being recognised for its growing role in responding to wildlife emergencies. During the fires, our veterinary teams were deployed by the government to assess, treat and rehabilitate bushfire-affected animals. And we worked really closely with partners from government, non-government organisations, local communities, researchers, wildlife, veterinary and other conservation organisations. And our experience and expertise played a lead role in the wildlife response, relief and recovery efforts. We provided veterinary, behavioural and ecological expertise on wildlife welfare and we supported, threat, supported threatened species conservation and also a threatened species extraction process. I'm sure you're aware of the devastating impacts of the bushfires. They started in Australia's hottest and driest year on record. Much of the country was in drought and the forest fire danger index was the highest since national records began. The fires burned for nine months and every Australian state and territory was impacted. 33 people died, including six Australian firefighters and three American aerial firefighters. Smoke blanketed much of Australia, including our capital cities, and this contributed to hundreds more deaths. Thousands of homes were destroyed or damaged, threatening and displacing hundreds of communities, and over 24 million hectares burnt. Over 3 billion animals were killed or displaced by the fires, and many threatened species and other ecological communities were extremely harmed. For many communities, 
The bushfires were not the only disaster they faced that summer. After the drought and the fires came storms and floods. And before that last fire was extinguished, Australia announced its first case of COVID-19 in early 2020. This truly tested Australia's ability to adapt and build resilience in the face of cascading risks. Since the bushfires in Australia, we have continued to experience ongoing significant weather events like tropical cyclones, extreme rainfall and deadly flooding events, catastrophic storms and earthquake, extreme cold fronts, high seas, dust storms and extreme heat waves. And these are events that are happening one after the other and often and more and more so at the same time. So Zoos Victoria recognises the need to understand and act on the impact of more frequent, severe and overlapping disasters and the direct and indirect impacts on our wildlife conservation and fighting extinction programs. We understand the role climate change is having on our very disaster prone nation. I've borrowed this slide from the Australian Climate Council. It demonstrates the impacts of climate change on our wildlife and ecosystems. It talks about changes in air and water temperature, changes in where species are located. And we can see here that climate change is threatening species in Australia in multiple and com complex ways. Um, it includes changing environmental thresholds like the, the air and water temperature and water quality beyond those that species can tolerate. The disruption of environmental cues like those for breeding or pollination. So rising temperatures disrupt natural reproduction in some animals and you can see that here with the sea turtle in the Great Barrier Reef. This has profound consequences. Increasing the number of extreme heat waves in many parts of the world we know is a consequence of climate change and this has real consequences for human and animal health. And obviously the direct loss of individual species or even populations as a result of extreme events like the bushfires, we, don't, we can't overstate the significant impact that that has. Other things we need to consider include land degradation and habitat loss, loss of important interactions between species, the arrival of new negative species such as vector and waterborne diseases, heat stress and air pollution. And also we're seeing a shift in where species live and this is apparently happening faster than we anticipated. I'll just quickly mention the Bramble Camelomus on the right hand side of the screen there, the first documented mammal recognised as going extinct due to climate change. So we see here some vulnerable species in Australia, koalas, platypus, sea turtles and flying foxes, all suffering from the consequences of climate change and extreme weather events. I will now ask some of my colleagues at Zoos Victoria to share their views on climate change and the impact on our wildlife and threatened species and why we're committed to taking action. <laughs> Which species are most at risk of extinction due to climate change? No species is safe from the impact of climate change currently. As it gets hotter, drier, wetter, as the climate changes, many species are not adaptable enough to change to that changing environment. A lot of the species that are most at risk are, are the ones that um, are in those marginal habitats. So, um, for example, our alpine region. So there's quite a few species that we work with at the zoo that, that rely on snow cover and snowfall. Um, so bobo frog, a big one, uh, mountain pygmy possums, uh, the alpine skin species that require the snow to either help uh, insulate, to help with food, help with uh, internal regulation as well during the colder period. So if there's no snow, species that rely on it are going to be in a hell of a lot of trouble. It also impacts not only the species that we're particularly passionate about and committed to, but it impacts human livelihoods as well. And we saw firsthand the impact of climate change in the black summer. And that, you know, that was, I think, a, a bit of a reality check for a lot of us because it, you, know, you can smell the smoke, you, you can even melt it, even though the fires were so far away. We saw firsthand the devastation and the impact on wildlife and human communities. <laughs> Really, many animals were almost their entire range was burned during those fires. If that happens, where there's only a small population in one localized area, we could lose a species entirely in a single climate change related event. Zoos 
Zoos Victoria recognises that all species are becoming increasingly impacted and threatened by climate change, including humans. And that's why in March 2021, in recognising our duty and purpose, the Zoos Victoria Board approved our position statement on climate change as a first step in taking action. You can see our position statement on climate change on this slide. Some of the challenges to our conservation work as a result of climate change include things like habitat and ecosystem disruption and destruction, human and economic intrusions, more species being pushed closer to extinction. And this is complicating our ability to track, monitor and collect data on species. Our translocations can become more challenging. Financial resources are becoming scarcer and our partners in the wildlife and environment sector are becoming increasingly overwhelmed as their capacity to support us is challenged. Our ability to support wildlife will be also be tested and our existing organisational strategies and visions could be undermined and overwhelmed, potentially impacting the way we operate through our staff, properties and partners. For example, in extreme heat events, both animals, staff and visitors at zoos can become vulnerable and exposed. So we are working with our partners and we have already made huge inroads. And here's some of what we've done mapped against the Sustainable Development Goals. In 2011, Zoos Victoria became the world's first independently carbon certifi uh, certified carbon neutral zoo across our three properties. We utilise 100% renewable energy from solar and wind power renewable energy procurement programs, water recycling, 90% waste diversion from landfill, and an expanded choice of meat-free menu items. Our species and scientific expertise and specialised breeding facilities and relocation programs are critical in our fight against the ex extinction of those species. In protecting wildlife habitat, we partner with organisations to protect critical wildlife habitat and support revegetation and restoration activities. We also invest in carbon, carbon offsets that protect biodiversity hotspots around the world. And locally, we are always committed to ensuring the best possible care for the animals in our zoos. Zoos Victoria provided a global example during the 2020 bushfires of how quickly and effectively we can respond to threats to wildlife exposed by extreme weather events. We continue to build our wildlife health and welfare capability and improve our disaster preparedness, response and recovery processes so that we can more effectively respond to wildlife impacted by disasters. We continue to inspire hearts and minds. We believe in connecting people with nature to create a future rich in wildlife. We inspire hearts and minds by inspiring wildlife friendly actions amongst millions of visitors, members and supporters. Our community conservation campaigns inspire to people to make wildlife friendly choices. And finally, appointing a climate action and disaster resilience advisor demonstrates how Zoos Victoria is committed to taking action to address the immediate and future impacts of climate change and disasters on wildlife and their environments. I will now ask my colleague Kiam to tell you a bit more about our sustainability program at Zoos Victoria. Hi, my name is Kiam Yun. I'm the Senior Manager of Environmental Sustainability here at Zoo Victoria. Zoo Victoria is a zoo based conservation organization which uses Melbourne Zoo, Social Sanctuary, and Variety of Zoo. In 2013, Zoo Victoria became the first zoo in the world to become carbon neutral. We also embarked on our environmental, social, and governance for children, ensuring that environmental performance, social inclusion, and governance is included. In our procurement processes. These are just some ways that Zoo Victoria is reducing its environmental footprint and ensuring that its operations are well attended. For this climate action, we have reduced our carbon footprint through resource efficiency, renewable energy, and improved waste management. For our remaining carbon, we purchase carbon offsets that have co high in habitat protection and rehabilitation together with community development. This project has measurable benefits in the life of SDGs such as zero hunger, no poverty, good health and well-being, clean water and sanitation, and life on land. It doesn't just stop at carbon neutrality. Our sustainability plan sets up a continuous improvement program to reduce our environmental footprint. Projects from this plan are aligned to 12 SDGs, in particular climate action, life on land, life below water, responsible consumption and production, 
and industry innovation and infrastructure. We have also embarked on our environmental, social and governance procurement, ensuring environmental performance, social inclusion and governance are considered. These are just some ways that this Victoria is reducing environmental footprint and making sure our operations are well friendly. So what are our next steps? Our values are very important to us in guiding how we go about achieving our purpose. And particularly three of those values you can see on the screen, optimism, curiosity, and trust. And despite some of the scenarios I have spoken about already, there is much to be hopeful about. And we are absolutely committed to continue our hard work, knowing that while there is still much to do, there is much that we can do. We will draw on national, local and global resources to help us along the way, like the Sendai Framework and the Sustainable Development Goals. There are many resources, which indicates just how much work is already being done by so many. We will continue to work towards net zero emissions, constantly looking for ways where we can improve our organisational sustainability and efforts to mitigate climate change. We will continue to play a key role in disaster resilience and climate action for wildlife. We will continue to support, support threatened species and vulnerable ecosystems. We will support the welfare of individual animals and champion nature-based community recovery. And we will continue building public awareness, education and collaboration. Our Wildlife Conservation Master Plan is slated for review and will have climate change impacts firmly considered and embedded as a key theme across all areas of our work. We will action our new wildlife emergency management arrangements, which integrates into the state emergency management framework and strengthen our existing processes to respond to wildlife emergencies. We will continue with our actions under the bushfire response and recovery plan, including developing our wildlife welfare and outreach team and capability, expanding our resources and facilities on our properties for wildlife impacted by disasters implementing lessons from the bushfires, including wildlife triage review, and we will continue to expand our focus on wildlife health in the changing climate and disaster landscape. And of course, our Summer for Wildlife campaign will continue, supporting con conservation of wildlife during and after fires, heat wave events, and other emergencies. But we know we need to do more to consider the impacts of climate change and things like more extreme heat waves, more frequent mega bush bushfires, severe storms and floods and droughts and obviously the impacts of all of these on our work with wildlife. We want our workforce, members, donors, partners and stakeholders to understand and act on the impacts of climate change on wildlife and their environments and understand the role of Zoos Victoria and other conservation-based organisations in disaster risk reduction, climate change resilience, adaptation and mitigation. We need to continue our work to understand the impacts of climate change on our 27 fighting extinction and other species to inform the prioritization of resources towards our conservation actions. We want to be recognized as a conservation leader and key stakeholder in addressing the impacts of climate change on wildlife conservation in local, state, national and international forums and contribute to, to, to decision making and action. Zoos Victoria will continue to strengthen capability and resources to support wildlife to build resilience to the immediate future impacts of climate change. Our climate change action plan for wildlife will outline how Zoos uh, Victoria programs and strategies will be designed to better prepare for and where possible mitigate and adapt the impacts of climate change to people, wildlife and the environment. And we want to contribute to a climate action for wildlife research agenda to advance knowledge in this field and build our knowledge, awareness and wisdom. And finally, on the screen there, you can see um, our key focus areas, working with wildlife, connecting community with nature, creating special places and thriving ethical business. And these underpin all the work that we'll do. So finally, we know that Zoos Victoria will increasingly take a critical lead role in disasters. Catastrophic disasters such as the 2019-20 bushfires and the current floods are predicted to occur at a higher frequency and greater intensity and more likely to overlap in the future. We can't keep doing the same thing. So how do we ensure that Zoos Victoria's vision remains resilient in a changing climate? We need to think beyond extreme weather events and consider the long-term flow-on impacts and consequences of climate change and catastrophic disasters on our precious wildlife and ecosystems. People and nature are interconnected in many complex and various ways. 
we know that not only wildlife and nature, but all people depend on healthy, thriving, living ecosystems. So in summary, we need to think to the future and build our future resilience and build better before. We need to understand shared responsibility and that we all have a role to play. We need to understand and build on local context and knowledge, and particularly in Australia, we want to understand and draw on the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island, Island, Islander people wisdom. We want to protect what we value. So we need to understand what we value and understand the risks to those things that we value. Partnership is powerful and we need to build connections with all of those around us because we all have a role to play. Finally, knowledge is power. So we will make good and wise decisions with all the knowledge that exists from all of those that are supporting our work. We want to continue to inspire hearts and minds and build on those values of optimism, curiosity and trust in all that we do. We know this work is critical to realise our vision for a future rich in wildlife. I'd like you to thank you for the opportunity to present today and here's some further information and resources about some of the things I've spoken to you about today. Thank you.